2023, generative models changed the way we thought about AI and its impact on industry, society, and day-to-day -day work. To empower developers, we release new tools to make building applications easier and continue in our goal of making the community inclusive of all voices. Check our top five key takeaways from the 2023 Women in Machine Learning Symposium. What are the deep human needs that inspire you? Tell me what inspires you. Go ahead, take a second, grab a piece of paper, pen, pencil, write it down. Go wild. Think about the most important problems that create value. How might you use AIML to help us find a safer path to Mars? Solve what's for dinner or bring a little more fun into your daily life. Imagine a world of possibility where you can make a rainy day just a little bit brighter. We're very excited about a new way of looking at frameworks, which is less about optimizing one framework stack and more about the enablement of a modular framework ecosystem. We believe model builders want choice across framework components to pick the best pieces across high-level APIs and framework cores and deployment modules that suit their particular needs. As one particular example of this approach, I'd love to call out the recent GA release of Keras 3.0, which now supports multiple backends, not just TensorFlow anymore, but also Jackson PyTorch. So you can develop your model in Keras and easily port that model from one backend to another to meet your needs for different environments and different use cases. When you are building a machine learning model, there are a series of steps that you need to go through. Acquiring data to use to train your model, preparing those data to address quality considerations, extracting the critical features from those data, and then training a model, which includes finding the right model architecture. Finally, you will evaluate your model, identify the gaps, and repeat the process. It used to be the case that most of the time in machine learning model development went into the training step, experimenting with the different model architectures, hyperparameter tuning, and so forth. Over the last few years, though, we have seen a few model architectures have become dominant. With that shift, the hands-on time required for model training has been reduced significantly for most applications. Instead, we are seeing most model development time go into the other pieces of this picture, iterating on data used to train and evaluate the model. And that's what we are talking about when we say data-centric AI, focusing on the data required to produce and evaluate the model. Kegel has the biggest data science community out there. If you want to meet people, start conversations, ask questions that are actually answered, Kegel is the place for you. If you want to grow your Twitter following, Kegel is also the place for you. For example, what I did at the beginning is I just looked up all the people that I admired within the platform because they usually have their LinkedIn or Twitter profiles listed on their Kegel profile. So it's super easy. You just can just follow them, learn from them, and grow your, your data science community around you. AI technology has come a long way since its first commercial application in the voice recognition space. A few years ago, we began seeing technology that can automate the tracking of key points of a human body while in motion. What you're seeing here is a machine learned model that through millions of frames of photo and video data can accurately pinpoint to the joint centers of key body parts like shoulders and hips, knees and elbows. This, as many of you guys know, is called 2D pose estimation. With Sportsbox, we've taken it a few steps further. We've trained our AI models to accurately identify over 40 key points on the body and equipment with an incredible degree of accuracy from just a single video. AI is accessible. AI is responsible. We want to make AI accessible to everyone. AI is human-centric. <laughs>